Hey, what's up guys, Monster Fast Storm. I took a little break from recording the last part, and uh, today we'll be talking about 100% orange juice is uh, battle mechanics. And in this video, we'll be covering the uh, actual battle system. In this case, literally incorporated into a battle. As opposed to purely evented, which was the last video. Which, while it did take more work, there are some benefits, as you will soon see. Regardless, I don't really have anything else to say here. Uh, again, apology for sniffles, and uh, let's get right into it. Alright, let's see if I can remember all these, because remember how last episode, or last part, I said we didn't need any plugins? Well, we didn't need any plugins for the event system. In this one, I use like five or six plugins. But uh, you should only need at least four? I'm gonna assume. All right, here we go. You're gonna need auto pass states. Uh, battle AI core, especially this one. I can assure you on that. Action sequence pack one or skill core. I don't know how you do it in skill core, but I'm gonna assume there is a way to do it in skill core. Unless I'm remembering wrong and you do actually need skill core anyways. Battle system, uh, standard turn battle, which is what the battle system we're using today. And honestly, you're gonna need it for this particular battle system. And buff and state score. I believe that's all. I don't think there's anything else. Alright, with that said, let's get in. Well, actually, technically, you do need battle engine core. Like, by default. Alright, now we can actually get started with the action tutorial. Alright, we're gonna be covering the actors and the variables first. We are covering the actors because. Well, I say actors, but actor is what we're looking for here. Here's a character. Siguri, I should have imported an image, but I didn't for some reason. We have three passive states on her, which, uh, so the reason, so buff and state score isn't required. In this case, it is only used for showing how much attack, defense, and evade a character has. In this case, we'll be using this to show Siguri, the player, or Mark, and Mark, the enemy's stats. So that's the only reason why we're using, uh... I'm pretty sure it's not the only reason why we're using past states. I'm pretty sure that's the only reason we're using buff and states core. Unless past states also isn't required, in which case you don't need all the past states either. Let me let me look at this first. Yeah, I don't think you actually need auto passive states. Yeah, you don't need it because it goes in conjunction with buff states core, but it might be helpful to have. Uh but yeah, as I said earlier, you're gonna need those these specific passive states. Or you don't need those passive states on the characters. Anyways, going to the actual topic, which is variables. Uh, we can use this. So uh, you probably you may have you may or may not have watched the previous video, but similar to that one, we're gonna be using dice, total attack, total defense, evade. I don't think we need a bear defend, we definitely don't need that, but we do need player number, attack number one, and attack number two. I forgot what attack number one and attack number two are. Let me let me skim over this. Never mind, I remember. It just means the total the attack for each of those players, because we are gonna need separate ones in this case. Question mark? Which I don't know how I think I'm just making it so it's separate this time, but the vented system didn't use separate variables. But we'll see as we go along if I do need two variables or not. But besides that, I don't think we need any switches. Nope, we do not need any switches, because we are using the actual battle system. Alright, we can go on to the next segment now. Alright, I'm gonna be explaining this because I did that last episode, but since you may have not watched that video, uh, I'll be talking about it here, so if you ever watch that video, you don't need to see this part. Basically, I'm going to be explaining the battle system of Orange Juice. In 100% Orange Juice, there are four players along a map, kind of like Mario Party, and occasionally you'll run into the occasional player, and you have the option of initiating a battle. Now, the player who initiates the battle will be able to attack, while the other player gets to choose either defend or evade that particular attack. Based on whatever they want, they can do whatever. 
Then the turn switches so that the roles are reversed. The second player will be attacking and the first will be defending or evading. That's basically how, basically how it goes, but I should talk about the values themselves. Basically, you add... The values are as follows. You add the total attack, which is the attack stat of player 1, or the attacking player, which is whatever is assigned to them. In this case, we're using 0. Plus a dice roll from 1 to 6. And then the defending player, whatever uh, defend or evade value in question they have in particular, they add that to a dice roll as well. Uh, if they are defending, the damage is reduced by... The attack damage is reduced by their defense total value. However, it cannot go below 1. So they always take at least 1 damage, basically. Evasion, if the uh, evasion total does not exceed the attack value total, then they take full damage. But if it does exceed the attack value total, then they avoid all damage completely. So with that said, we can actually go to the troop events now. Alright, time to talk about the troop events, as well as the states, of course. Now there's a lot to go over here, but uh, I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible. And hopefully concise. We're gonna have this first page here, having a condition of turn zero and the span of a battle, because we only want this to happen once. Though I'm not sure if turn zero just determines that anyways, but we just want this to happen once. We're controlling the variables for attack number one and attack number two. We're gonna equal we're gonna have both of those at zero. I hope there's a good reason for that, because I still well, we'll see. We'll be sending the player number to equal to one. Now this this actual this page is actually very similar to the next page, however we do want the only difference is that we are setting the variables for attack number one and attack number two on the turn zero page. The other page has a different condition, so we'll go over that soon. Uh, besides that, we're having the entire player have a state called first up. Wait, I said entire player? Entire party, or in this case, the one person you should have, because this is a 1v1 battle system. Uh, we're gonna have them have the state first up, which gives them double agility. Oh, I should probably explain why it's double agility and why that matters. Uh, both the actor and the enemy in question should have a, a specific agility value that can easily be changed. If you have an agility value of one, for example, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna see that much results because if you decrease uh, one, you can't. So we're using fifty in this case. So technically, agility. Besides uh, HP, are stats that you need for this tutorial specifically. Uh, also, uh, both characters have 5 HP. So, we're saying 50, uh, the states will double that to 100. Now, the other player will be getting a uh, second up, which will give them 0%. This is to ensure that one player or another is going to be going up first, and the other will be defending or evading. Going back to our troop events. Uh, we'll be having the entire party gain the attack skill, which will let them attack, roll a dice, and, well, add that to their attack value, so they can have a total attack value, which will be defined in the message box. Uh, and otherwise, they'll be losing their defend and evade skills, which I will go over later. I'll go over these skills later. Now, same thing happens here, but again, no attack values are defined but we'll be having the condition turn end and turn 0 plus 2 times x, which should happen, which which happens at the end of every second turn, basically. And this is what we'll be having this happen every turn, because we want it to happen constantly. On the other hand, we have uh, the player 2 initiating side, which is uh, turn end and turn 1 plus 2 times x, so every odd turn question mark every first i guess the first i guess the odd turns are for the player and the even turns are for uh the, the second player in this case the computer which kind of makes things more confusing but anyways uh we want to use the specific conditions basically now on the flip side we'll be setting the player number to equal to two 
end the party. Instead, we'll be having second up the second up state, and the tr the enemy will be having the first up state. And the party will also be getting defend and evade skill while losing the attack skill. I uh, I keep forgetting to mention stuff, but here we are again. Uh, first up and second up should have the removal condition of remove battle end and end after a single turn, just so we can ensure that it only lasts a single turn. Besides that, I think we can go on to our next topic, which I think is the skills. As luck would have it, we are not just talking about skills, we're talking about skills, con events, and enemy AI. However, we're going to be talking about the skills because I feel like that might be important here. Going on all the way down here, we'll have the attack, defend, and evade skills, which unfortunately are tied to common events. But if you know how to put a common event in a, in a, a skill core, note tag sort of deal, uh, you don't need to actually sequence pack one, which is why I said it's flexible. Anyways, we have a description here, roll between 1 and 6 and add that to the user's total. And then we'll be having target action note tags here saying to go to common event 7. For defend and evade, uh, they are basically the same thing, but we also have action effect. We'll cover that later. Go into the common event for attacking. We're going to be rolling 1 to 6 using this dice variable. If player number is 1, we'll be adding the total attack of 0 plus the dice. Wait, no, we'll be setting it to 0 just so we can reset it all. We'll be adding the dice value to the total attack, so 1 to 6, and we'll be adding the attack of attack number 1, which is the player's attack. Otherwise, if it's player number 2, we do the opposite, except, well, not really the opposite, but we're adding player 2's attack instead. And it'll be showing a message that says how much the attack value is. Now going back to our defend and evade skills, uh, the first difference, first of all, is that, well, there's an animation, we want this to affect the user, but we want the attack to affect the enemy. We want this to affect the user. We want to have the formula set to variable 9, which is our attack. Just, I think it's just attack. Is it the attack? I think it's the attack one but just variable 9 in this case. We'll be having the common event 8 play out, or 9 if you're using evade, and we'll be having action effect at the end of it. I'll be explaining that later. Going to our, that is not common events. That is not common events either. This is common events. Going to defend, uh, we're rolling 1 to 6. Uh, total defense evade equals 0, so we can reset it. We'll be adding the dice value. If it happens to be less than zero, this needs to be less than or equal to. This needs to be less than or equal to. Uh, pretend I changed that for evade as well. Uh, if you didn't, I'm gonna explain this right now. Actually, uh, basically in 100% orange juice, uh, they don't have it, so anyone can have a total defense evade or even attack value to be less than one. So uh, we're gonna be saying that to one if that happens to be the case in this case as well. Now. If the total attack, as I said earlier, oh no, not, not as I said earlier, this is defend, not evade. If the total attack is greater than the defense and evade value of the defending player, uh, we'll be subtracting the attack minus their defense and evade. However, otherwise, we're going to be setting the total attack to 1 because they always take 1 damage. And we'll be having a little message box. Uh, after that, since this variable is already defined as, well, whatever in this common event, going back to our skills, That'll be how much damage that the enemy ends up taking from this formula, which is why we have action effects so it can have the damage. Evade on the other hand is a little bit different. Uh, same thing, roll, add the defense or evade stats. Huh. I'm looking at this here. Technically we don't define it here, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll be adding to the dice value and we'll be having the same conditional branch. I'm gonna actually straight up going to less than or equal to. You don't have to pretend anything now. And in this case, if attack is greater or equal to total defense or evade, nothing happens because you're taking the entire damage, bud. There's no avoiding this damage. But otherwise, we'll be sending to zero. We'll be having a little text box, and as stated earlier, we have the little damage formula to do the damage for us. I think I'm gonna be covering. Well, let's cover enemy AI now. Let's do it right now. Okay. Using battle AI core, we're going to be defining what the enemy AI does. In this case, if variable 12 is equal to 2, so if the player's total attack... No. If the 
if oh no variable 12 is the player number if player is number two which means that the computer is the computer's turn to attack they'll be using the attack skill now now we're going to be going to the defense and evade skills uh it also doesn't really matter what you put here i'm pretty sure because it's 1v1 if the hp parameter of this particular uh computer is equal to one they'll be using evade and also, if the attack value of the player is less than or equal to 3, they'll also be using evade. In this case, we're making it so computers uh, defend if the, va if the attack value is 4 or greater, and evade if it's 3 or lower. Wait, does that make sense? Yeah, it, I think that makes sense. So in this case, they'll be evading for both of these situations, and also because uh, you had to evade at 1 HP because defending doesn't do anything. On the flip side, if it's greater than 3, they'll be using defense, of course. Anyways, besides that, yeah. I think we can go on to the demonstration, I think. I am not sure if I like the fact that I kind of like first tried every single one of these recordings for these segments in this video, but in the last video I took many, many tries. Anyways, we're in a demonstration here. Uh, we have Suguri here as our main character. And us is representing the player, and we have Mark as the enemy player. Now we're not going to use the we're not going to use the attack command because that's just that's just the actual basic attack. It's not our skills that we implemented. So we're going to be using attack here, which again rolls between one and six, and adds that to the user's attack. As you can see under our name, as our stats, uh, they're all zero, which is not Saguri stats in the game, which is not realistically accurate. But neither are Marks. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure QP, I think her name is, has zero in all sets, but we're not using QP because. Long story. Anyways, we're using attack here. And our value. One. Our value is one. Okay. That's kind of lame. Depending on that, they're gonna be evading, and they got two, so easily, zero damage. And they get a six straight up. Okay, evading is not in our favor here, so we're gonna be defending. Two? How dare you? I took four damage. Okay, let's see if we can get a lucky attack roll. Four. Okay. Mmm, one damage. Stop getting these high rolls. I gotta evade now. By Jove, they've done it. They defeated me. I can't believe it. Okay, we're resetting this because I have to reset it and not restart the and I can't exit because that'll stop the recording. Let's try this again! But as you can see, attack and defend and evade switch between each turn. Six! Now the luck's coming with me! Wait, that's a one shot. Defend value is one? That's a one shot. Ooh, look at that. Nine. 10 million minus one EXP received. And with that said, this tutorial is over. Well, the demonstration's over. I still got the outro. So I'll see you at the outro. Bye. I didn't need to say bye there, but I'll see you at the outro. I sincerely apologize for that long-winded segment in two segments ago, because I just kept making it more confusing. I'm not sure if you need the two attack variables. I don't know why I did that. You might actually need it. No, wait, no. I think you actually do need it. Like, on a typical standard. I think we just did that so we could differentiate it from how I did it in the previous but there's no point because there's no double there's no two defense variables in evade variables. Anyways you're supposed to like increase the number of variables if you do have different values. I probably should have mentioned that in both tutorials. Anyways yeah that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, I did record these two tutorials, two part tutorial parts back to back, which means I'm very tired. I'm glad I didn't I'm glad my allergies didn't kick in for both of these actually. Uh, besides that, uh, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, my December goals. Uh, basically, I'm going to be trying to do three more tutorials for December. Uh, third one, aka number 50, might be a special one, but if not, it's going to be similar to the, to the next two. I'm gonna be, I don't really have that many ideas, but that's basically what, what's going to be happening right now. Uh, otherwise, if it is going to be a special one, it's going to come out on New Year's, which is not December. 
But yeah, I think I'm gonna have Let's Make It's for those three as well. Single ones, not two partners. So that might be something to look out for. That'll determine what happens with the tutorials. By the way, let's make it start replacing tutorial previews because tutorial previews are just me being lazy. Kind of. It's, uh, uh, I mean, I'm explaining that in a different video, but... Alright, with that said, see you guys and stay safe. Bye.